Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. Today I would like to share with you two sleeveless dresses with a bit of a 1950s vibe. And today's dresses are exactly the same in terms of the pattern combinations um, as the second dress from my video 78. And uh, after I made up that second dress, I was just so in love with the combination. And uh, as they say, you know, when you find a winner, you stick with it. And so I decided to make uh, two more of the dresses immediately. And actually both of the dresses that I will share with you today uh, were actually cut out uh, before the yellow dresses from my last video, video 79 when I decided at last minute to participate in the So Yellow for Endo 2022 challenge to raise awareness uh, for endometriosis uh, to promote women's health issues. So the first dress that I will share with you today is this uh, green dress here made from under just under two yards of quilting cotton that I purchased from Joanne uh, on New Year's Day uh, this year. And so here is a close-up look of the print. And I think it's just so pretty. I just love this very sort of a emerald green and plus sort of daisy-ish kind of print. And so I just love it, it's so pretty. And just like the uh, other dress from video 78, you know, it's the same uh, wide shoulder, sort of sleeveless dress look and with a belt and pockets. And um, and also just like before, the bodice is a self-drafted bodice, uh, but any uh, bodice that fits you would work. And the skirt, I just paired it with a gathered skirt uh, from Very Easy Vogue V9197, which is also the very first pattern that I've ever used in my sewing journey. So about this fabric, it's a little, there's a little bit of a funny story. Um, so at the end of the year, last year, I was just absolutely slumped with work. And um, just like magic, all of a sudden, my year-end work was done at about 2.30 on New Year's Eve, uh, so December 31st. And I just felt like an incredible sense of relief upon me. <laughs> that was such a great feeling. But anyway, because I actually was quite surprised that I finished as early as I did because as I was working uh, with West Coast people. And so uh, in a way, I mean, for some of the year-end projects. So in a way, I was working on West Coast time, even though the East Coast projects were already wrapped up by that morning. And so when it was all done at 2.30, I was so surprised. And also because of COVID and also because I did not know what time I would finish. Because in years past, I have worked all the way almost until midnight on New Year's Eve to get year-end deals done. So I did not schedule anything. I did not go to any parties and partly obviously it's because of COVID. And uh, so on New Year's Day, I was just so bored. <laughs> it's terrible, you know. So I was just so bored out of my mind in a way. And uh, so I said, okay, what could I do? Since I had no uh, activities planned. And so I looked up uh, Joanne's website. Um, I was just kind of browsing for fabrics. And turned out Joanne was actually open on New Year's Day. And I was quite surprised actually, I, you know, because as far as I could remember, nothing was ever open on New Year's Day. So, uh, so I actually called the store to make sure that it was actually open and turned out it was. So I just took my dog, uh, went for a nice drive to upstate Connecticut uh, on New Year's Day. And that day the weather, in a way it was perfect to bring my dog along because it was not raining but it also was not sunny. So it's, a, it's an overcast day, I think in about the low 50s, you know, so for my viewers, you know, using Celsius, I think it's just a little above 10 degrees Celsius. So anyway, so that was a perfect day because it, if it were sunny, I couldn't take my dog with me because then, you know, it's not safe to keep a dog 
in the car um, when it's sunny, even if I, you know, leave the door um, open with a fairly large, large crack. Anyway, so we drove, I don't know, an hour and a half to, um, to Connecticut. And uh, so originally I asked them and they, it was okay for me to bring my dog in. But I think my dog uh, just got bored very quickly and was antsy and acting out. So I just brought him back to my car and then he, he was perfectly content to just sleep in the car uh, while I shop inside the store. And so this is a fabric I got during that trip. And this is also the only fabric I got during that trip because I still have a, you know, a fairly large stash of quilting cotton in, at home. So, so I did not want to buy anything more and luckily also nothing caught my fancy. So that made it easy. So anyway, so that was just a bit of a, a funny backdrop about uh, this fabric. And I just loved it so much. It really is beautiful. And uh, about this, one of the reasons I really like this combination um, is that the amount of fabric needed is exactly two yards of cotton cotton. So, or I suppose you no know, would also be the same for silk because silk generally is about 42, 43 inches uh, with a standard type of uh, silk. Uh, but in this case, this was the, the last portion that they had at the store at Joanne. And uh, it measured uh, one yard and 32 inches. So it's four inches short of two yards. As a result, I had to, as a result, um, the pockets uh, were made up of several smaller pieces, you know, so what I did before, as I mentioned before, I would just um, patch them up and uh, search them if necessary. And then that's when I cut out the pattern piece. And this makes it easier uh, to get the exact size. So, so anyway, so, but I am really glad how it works out. I really love this color. And uh, so really nothing revolutionary because exactly the same as the second dress from my video 78, but I just love it. About the hem finish for the skirt portion of this dress, uh, traditionally I finish a lot of my dresses with the blind hem foot of my machine. However, it doesn't always sit perfectly flat, even after I ironed it. And so I wanted to try a different method, uh, i.e. the, the hem finish that you see uh, from in silk blouses that you uh, buy from the store. And so this is what it looks like. Uh, so as you can see, you know, the underside is uh, fairly light, but this is a very narrow uh, hem finish. And so what I did was basically I folded over and sew a, a line of stitching that is really, really close to the folded edge. Then I trim all the excess seam allowance. Then I fold it again and then also sew another line of stitching that is really, really close to the folded edge. And I really love it. It's, it really, it does not look homemade at all because I think the line of stitching is very close to the folded edge. And, uh, and this ensures that the fabric lies perfectly flat. I am very happy about this method and the result it gives me. So I use this hemming method for uh, several of the dresses uh, that I have made uh, since this one. So here is a quick video of this emerald green base with daisy-ish like uh, floral print. And I paired the dress with a pair of three and a half inch heels um, in black. And I just really love it. And then because of its 1950s vibe, I also paired it with a strand of 16 inch uh, pearl that I've had forever. I think probably close to 20 years at this point. Uh, but you know, with these things, if you take care of it, it will last forever with regular restringing. Um, so anyway, so I just love it and so really happy about how this dress turned out. The second dress that I will share with you today is this one here uh, made from two yards of about 44 inch wide cotton dog fabric that I purchased 
from walmart.com uh, almost about three years ago and this was purchased at the same time as the large scale floral print duck cotton that I used in for the second dress in my video 78 and so here's a close-up look of this print and I just love it as you can see it's a white base uh, with very various shades of blue and I think it looks uh, it reminds me of a watercolor sort of a landscape kind of paint strokes so I just really love it and uh, even though I really like this fabric for the longest time I just really couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to make with it and because how well the second dress from my video 78 turned out I, uh, I, I started going through uh, my other pieces of cotton dog fabric that I purchased at the same time and decided that this one would be the perfect candidate for it and I'm really happy how it worked out so exactly the same as before in terms of construction and uh, also you know with the pockets and in this case because I had two full yards so I did not have to patch up anything for the pockets and also the belt uh, was also cut um, using two strips of uh, the entire width of this quilting cotton and uh, for more information about how I constructed this matching belt uh, please check out uh, my video uh, 77 so really not much to talk about because you know it's exactly the same pattern and bodice and skirt combination as before but I just really love it and also these days when I plan what fabric I want to use for my garments uh, I will look at you know what I have made already and the two dresses from video 78 are a bit of a red family and uh, the yellow dresses from 79 were obviously yellow dresses and so I just made a hunter green or emerald green one so I wanted to make one that is in the blue family so I am very happy with the pairing of this duck fabric uh, with this sleeveless dress with a bit of a 1950s vibe and uh, so here is a quick video of this sort of watercolor print uh, caution duck fabric dress and uh, I also paired it with the same three and a half inch heels in black I really just love it I just really love this combination and so really wanted to make a gazillion more but these two are the only ones uh, for the time being because I will be doing uh, something uh, involving dark manipulation for my next two videos thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed today's video so I hope you will stay safe be well, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye-bye.